oldest human tooth. Scientists have announced a sensational discovery in Germany. Ancient dental fossils, estimated to be almost 10 million years old, that they say do not fit into the established chronology of human history. What's truly shocking is that one of these fossils resembles the teeth of man's earliest ancestors. However, until now such teeth have only been found in Africa, not Europe, and even the existing range of fossils is millions of years younger. Found in September 2016 near the German city of Appelsheim, two well-preserved teeth date back to approximately 9.7 million years ago. One of the teeth, an upper right for a smaller, is similar in characteristics to other specimens found in the area. But the other tooth, the upper left canine, is different and the researchers say its outline and shape are similar to those of hominine species, including Australopithecus afarensis. The problem is that Lucy is estimated to be only 3 million years old and it is believed that humanity's earliest ancestors began their migration from Africa to Europe in Asia approximately 100,000 years ago. So the question is, who did these teeth belong to, which were in the wrong place and at the wrong time, and how did they get there? Heavenly Stones among the vast number of meteorites that have fallen to Earth over billions of years, Skystone, with its bluish tint and unusual oxygen-rich composition, is of particular interest to scientists. This space fragment discovered in West Africa in Sierra Leone by archaeologist and geologist Angelo Pitani in 1990 is shrouded in legend. Local residents believe that these stones were former celestial beings, turned into stones for their sins and dropped to Earth. Tests carried out in laboratories in Rome, Germany and Tokyo show that the stone consists of 77% oxygen, 20% carbon and lime, and also contains traces of silicon and other materials. This composition was recognized as unique and unlike other terrestrial samples, indicating the extraterrestrial origin of the stone. Carbon dating has shown that the sky stone ended up on Earth between 2,500 and 17,000 years ago, becoming the object of a collector's hunt. Along with sky stone, the Hypatius stone found in Libya is no less a mystery for scientists. Its chemical composition is different from anything found on Earth or in space. Hypatia is material formed before the formation of our solar system. Thus, sky stone and Hypatia stone continue to attract researchers with their mystery and unique composition. Would you like to own one of these stones? The largest meteorite on Earth the mysteries of space have always excited minds, and meteorites serve as evidence of mysterious visits from deep space to Earth. An example of such an incredible visitor is the Goba meteorite, discovered in Namibia, which to this day inspires admiration for its size and history. Unlike the Tunguska meteorite, which left many questions and assumptions, Goba is tangible evidence of space travel to our planet. Weighing 60 tons, this gigantic piece of metal, decorated with ancient rust, Today flaunts the amphitheater built especially for it and is one of Namibia's main attractions. The history of the discovery of the meteorite began in 1918, when farmer Jacobus Britz, plowing the ground, came across an unusual block. First trying to uproot it, and then carefully examining it, Brits discovered that in front of him was an iron meteorite, the composition of which was later determined to be 81% iron and 17% nickel. This find became a sensation, because at that time little was known about meteorites and the farmer dreamed of a big jackpot. The issues of transporting the huge space guest turned out to be so complicated that the sale had to be forgotten. Since then, the Goba meteorite whose weight has been reduced to 63 tons over time due to chemical erosion and vandalism, has been protected and recognized as a national monument. Today, Goba not only surprises with its size, but is also a living lesson in history and astronomy, reminding us of how small and at the same time important we are in this vast universe. And although tourists continue to leave their marks on it, every scratch is quickly hidden under a layer of rust, as if nature itself is erasing the boundaries between the earthly and the cosmic. Mystical Riddles of Ancient Egypt since ancient times, the heavens have inspired the Egyptians to create majestic monuments. The astronomical knowledge underlying the construction of the pyramids is amazing in its accuracy and depth. The pyramids of Giza, aligned with amazing precision in accordance with the stars of Orion's belt, testify to the extraordinary knowledge of the ancients in the field of cosmology. 
Such accuracy gives rise to speculation about possible extraterrestrial influence or even assistance in construction. Various texts, including the Pyramid texts, hint at a deep connection between the divine and the cosmic, suggesting that knowledge may have been passed down to humans from more advanced civilizations. The complexity and sophistication of ancient Egyptian architectural and engineering achievements, such as the ventilation system inside the pyramids and the acoustics in the temples, raises admiration and many questions. How were the ancient Egyptian able to so precisely craft and sell multi-ton stone blocks without any visible modern technology. Some argue that such knowledge could have been gained from the gods who, according to myth, visited Earth sharing their technology. These speculations are fueled by discoveries of unusually accurate star charts, surgical instruments, and other items indicating a high level of scientific and technological development. The discovery of artifacts with images resembling modern aircraft and complex mechanisms adds to the mystery of Egyptian history. For for example, reliefs depicting objects resembling helicopters and submarines are controversial among scientists. Perhaps the ancient Egyptians were inspired by visions of the future or used artifacts left behind by more advanced civilizations as prototypes to create their own technologies. There is a theory that the ancient Egyptians had knowledge far ahead of their time, including the secrets of eternal life, methods of treating diseases incurable at that time, and ways to generate energy. This knowledge may have been lost over the centuries, leaving behind only hints and references in religious texts and myths. The discovery of medical instruments, astronomical knowledge and chemical compounds used in mummification supports the idea that the ancient Egyptians had advanced knowledge. Imagine for a moment that an artifact was found in the depth of the Great Pyramid, indicating contact with an ancient civilization with technologies far superior to our own. The discovery of such a crystal, perhaps emitting an unknown type of energy, could revolutionize our understanding of history, of history, science, and the very nature of reality. This hypothetical scenario embodies humanity's eternal quest beyond the known to discover lost knowledge that could change the world. Neolithic Sacrifices on Uhlenberg Hill near Magdeburg, Germany, archaeologists have discovered a complex Neolithic burial site with two monumental mounds dating back 6,000 years. The two mounds, located 200 meters apart, contain wooden burial chambers with several burials. Since 2023, archaeologists from the State Office for Monument Protection and Archaeology of Saxony-Anhalt have been actively studying Uhlenberg in anticipation of the construction of an industrial park by Intel. Uhlenberg, thanks to its fertile soils, has been used for settlement since the early Neolithic period. During the Balbar culture, two large wooden burial chambers were built. Burial practices varied from simple burial pits to burials in wooden chambers on their mounds, indicating public or family burials. About a thousand years later, during the globular amphora culture, the road between the mounds was used for processions with sacrifices of young livestock and human burials. Mysterious Footprints in 1978, footprints dating back 3.7 million years were found in Tanzania, providing some of the first evidence of upright walking in human ancestors. The discovery sparked a wave of interest in the history of hominins. Near this place, other tracks were found, which some scientists mistakenly mistook for bear tracks. A new study from Allison McNutt's team at Ohio University disproves this theory. The researchers returned to analyzing the tracks found at the Lake Toli site known for its hominin print chains. The tracks were believed to belong to Australopithecus afarensis, to which the famous Lucy skeleton belongs. An international team of scientists decided to solve the mystery by re-excavating and examining five footprints. Comparisons with prints from bears, chimpanzees, and humans show that bears were unlikely to leave such tracks, given their mode of movement and stride width. Researchers observed the behavior of bears that were attracted to maple syrup or applesauce to walk on their hind legs. Observations have shown that bears rarely move in this manner, making the theory of a bear origin of the tracks unlikely. Analysis with chimpanzee tracks revealed similarities, but the morphology of the tracks indicated that they were made by a different species of Australopithecus, not Australopithecus afarensis. Thus, the study confirmed that the mysterious footprints in Laetoli belong to human ancestors. Helmets with runes 
The origin of the runic alphabet still remains a mystery to scientists seeking to establish the time of its appearance. Therefore, every archaeological find with a runic inscription is subject to careful study. When Nigo helmets with clear runic inscriptions were discovered in 1812, it raised many questions and theories regarding their meaning. Is it possible that Nigo helmets bear Germanic runes dating back to between 350 and 450 BC? Nigo helmets found near the town and castle of Nigo in the Duchy of Styria, in Slovenia contained 26 bronze helmets probably offered as a ceremonial gift. One of the helmets, called Nigao B, bore a runic inscription in the northern Etruscan alphabet. Probably this discovery has given rise to many theories as to what language the inscription is written in and what it means. Recent research by Tom Markey suggests that the inscription can be translated as Harrigus Priest. This could mean the owner of the helmet or the one who offered it as a sacrifice. Nigao A's helmet bears four further inscriptions, which Markey suggests are in Celtic. The helmets are now kept in various museums throughout Europe, including the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna and the Archaeological Museum in Zagreb. Burials of people with dogs and horses in the vicinity of Verona, Italy, archaeologists have discovered ancient burial grounds where people were buried along with animals, dating back to the pre-Roman period. The study, published in PLOS One, found that in addition to food animals, the remains of dogs and horses were found in the graves, which is a rarity in archaeology and raises interest in understanding the meaning of these burials. Of the 161 burials examined in the necropolis near Verona, dating back to the late Iron Age, every tenth contained animals. In four cases, the remains of dogs and horses were found that were not intended for food, which became especially significant for scientists. Attempts to link human and animal remains through demographic and genetic data have been unsuccessful, showing that the buried humans and animals were not related. The burials ranged from an infant buried with a dog to adults with the remains of horses. This diversity opens the door to different interpretations and speculation about the symbolic meaning of dogs and horses in ancient cultures as well as possible unknown burial rituals. Rock Chronicle Spanning 100 Generations Scientists from Argentina have discovered that ancient cave paintings in Patagonia are much older than previously thought. Using radiocarbon dating, the cave paintings were found to date back to around 6200 BC, during the late Holocene era, predating previous estimates by thousands of years. This underground gallery contains 895 unique images, grouped into 446 thematic groups. The study found that the cave was used as a site for the transmission of knowledge between hundreds of generations of hunter-gatherers who overcame the challenges of the harsh climate of ancient Patagonia by sharing information through rock art. The Ruins of Gadi the ancient ruins of Gedi, hidden in the depth of Kenya near the shores of the Indian Ocean, 16 kilometers from Melindi, are a testament to the flourishing Swahili civilization that left its mark on the East African coast. It is assumed that the city founded in the 12th century reached the peak of its development in the 15th-16th centuries, when it was surrounded by fortified walls. Gedi had a population of about 2,500 people, highlighting its importance as a trading center. The lack of written sources is compensated by rich archaeological finds indicating active trade between Gedi and many countries. The ruins cover an area of 45 acres where there are mosques, a palace, tombs, and stone houses with decorative finishing. The city was famous for its developed infrastructure, streets with drainage systems, and wells for water supply. However, the reason why the city was abandoned in the 17th century still remains a mystery. There are several versions, from the invasion of hostile tribes to environmental disasters. Getty was rediscovered in 1884 by the British Sir John Kirk, after which it was designated a historical monument in 1927 and a national monument of Kenya in 1948. In 1969, the ruins became part of the National Museum of Kenya. In 2000, a museum opened next to the ruins, displaying unique archaeological finds and an exhibition telling about life in Swahili cities. Getty remains a significant testament to African history and culture, providing a unique opportunity to learn about the life of an ancient society, its architecture, trade, and customs. The ruins of Gadi continue to attract archaeologists and tourists from all over the world, remaining one of the mysteries of the African continent. Axe with Runny, White, and Yolk 
In Britain, archaeologists have discovered a unique chicken egg from the era of the Roman Empire, preserved with liquid contents. The discovery was made in Buckinghamshire along with other artifacts along a Roman road, suggesting the site was used for ritual offerings. Of the four eggs found, only one remained intact, containing liquid, probably a mixture of yolk and white. The discovery provides new evidence about ancient agriculture in the region. According to archaeologists from the Natural History Museum, this is the oldest known surviving bird egg. Skeleton Coast The so-called Skeleton Coast is a 40 km wide and 500 km long stretch of coastline in Namibia that is both hostile and fascinating. Here, the cold and unpredictable Benguela current of the Atlantic Ocean meets the dune studded desert landscape of northwestern Namibia. The name Skeleton Coast comes from the huge number of beached whales, whose skeletons could be seen everywhere. The Ovahimba indigenous people of northeastern Namibia used whale bones to build their huts. Many ships have been wrecked off the Skeleton Coast due to thick fog, rough seas, unpredictable currents, and stormy winds. The sailors who managed to reach the shore had no chance chance of survival on this inhospitable coast and died of thirst. Despite the hostile nature of the Skeleton Coast, it is home to many wild animals adapted to life in the desert. In addition, some plants have amazingly adapted to the rainless conditions of the Skeleton Coast, relying solely on the daily fog from the Atlantic Ocean. Wolwichia, naramelons, lithop succulents, often called living stones, lichens, and pencil bushes grow here. Ancient Ruler's Cup in 2014, archaeologists in Athens made a surprising discovery – a wine goblet broken into 12 pieces, which scientists believe belonged to Pericles, the legendary Athenian leader whose reign marked the Golden Age for Athens. This historical artifact is now kept in the epigraphic museum of the city. The most intriguing thing about this find is the inscription that includes the name of seven men, including Pericles and presumably his brother Erephron. Inscriptions engraved on the bowl became visible only after a certain inspection of the artifact. The name Arifron, standing next to the name of Pericles, indicates a deep connection between these figures. It is believed that the cup was used during Pericles' youth at a wine symposium, where participants traditionally had their names engraved as a sign of remembrance of the fellowship. The find proves a unique insight into the culture and customs of ancient Greek society, allowing us to look into the past and feel the connection of time. Times. Samurai Treasure not far from Tokyo, the largest treasure trove of antique coins in Japanese history was discovered. The treasure is kept in a huge clay pot, which is now on display in Kumagaya, the Saitama Prefectural Cultural Treasury, i.e. the National Museum. The historical treasure of bronze coins not only reveals new historical data, but also serves as evidence of the natural chemical processes of time. The copper in their bronze alloy has oxidized over the past 400 years, causing the coins to take on a bright green hue due to a patina similar to that covering the Statue of Liberty. The clay pot of coins, which is more than half a meter wide, was likely buried hundreds of years ago. It was discovered by archaeologists last year in ruins that were the site of a medieval samurai pavilion. The coins date back to the 15th century during the Ming Dynasty in China. Coins from the Tang Dynasty, 7th century, were also found at the same excavation site. They are associated with Chinese dynasties because Japan was one of the last great civilizations to adopt its own coin system. The coins were held together on ropes, passing through holes, and each rope contained 1,000 coins. The standard at the time was one strain of 1,000 bronze coins equal to one ounce of silver. This knowledge of the historical period allowed archaeologists to estimate the number of coins without removing them from the giant pot. The number 260 was engraved on its lid. This coin hoard represented a huge fortune in 15th and 16th centuries Japan. For this money, one could buy enough rice to feed 500 people people for a year. Ship with gold coins An ancient sailboat loaded with gold coins valued at $13 million has been discovered in the mysterious sands of Namibia. A find of this magnitude in Africa is very rare, especially considering the antiquity and size of the ship. Archaeologists suggest that this is the Good Jesus, Bomb Jesus, a Portuguese sailing ship that sailed to India in 1533 with valuable cargo and disappeared forever. The fate of this ship remained a mystery for a long time, but apparently it became the victim of a 
powerful storm, which threw it ashore, where over time the skeleton of the ship was buried under a layer of sand. This theory is supported by the nature of the damage to the hull and changes in the terrain, which over time turned the seabed into part of the desert. As for the crew, they either escaped by getting ashore or drowned at sea. Only a few human bones were found. Interestingly, archaeologists found this ship before treasure hunters. This became possible due to the fact that the area where the sailboat was found is closed to visitors due to diamond mining. The diamond miners were the one who stumbled upon the first traces of the ancient vessel. The discovery of the good Jesus is of great significance not only because of the gold cargo. This ship offers a unique opportunity to learn more about the navigation of the Age of Discovery, about which little information has been preserved. Thus, the ship itself turned out to be more valuable than the gold coins found in it. Who scrolled this? In Spain, there was a discovery because of which the entire European Archaeological Society is going crazy from discussion. The thing is that in the small town of Ornatrellas, located in Cordoba, one of the residents presented the researchers with an ordinary, at first glance, fragment of an oil amphora. Amphoras and defines are a dime a dozen, but this one turned out to be special. This fragment, made about 1,800 years ago and measuring only 6 by 8 centimeters, initially did not arouse much interest. Some letters are scratched on it, but this is also a fairly common thing. In ancient times, everything was written on amphoras. However, the researchers decided to take a closer look at the inscription. Usually, information about the manufacturer, the quantity of goods, taxes, and so on was left on the amphoras. But nothing of the kind was found on this fragment. The inscription that was preserved on it read, SV Abonium Glandum Aristapa Cuvi Tisa Cuviet. Archaeologists made an assumption and, wow, it turned out to be a fragment of the famous poem Georgics by Virgil, written in 29 BC and dedicated to agriculture and rural life. But the most interesting thing is that the poem is scrolled on the very bottom edge of the amphora, where it was not at all expected to be seen. The author of this message from the past could be a skilled worker or even a child, since at that time, child labor was often used in factories. But one thing is clear for sure, the author was much more educated than most workers. Danish Spirals Archaeologists in Denmark have discovered 2,000 golden spirals buried in the field, believed to have been used to decorate the ceremonial clothing of priest kings who worshipped the sun in the Bronze Age. The find dates back to between 900 and 700 BC and is pure gold. Each spiral reaches a length of up to 3 centimeters, and the total weight of the find is from 200 to 300 grams. The purpose of the spirals is still a matter of debate, since such a discovery was made for the first time in Denmark. It is believed that the spirals could have been attached to threads that decorated a hat or umbrella, woven into hair, or embroidered on ceremonial clothing. In addition to the spirals and gold bracelets, six gold bowls were found here, discovered by local farmers in the 1800s. The area may have had religious significance as a place where Bronze Age worship was performed rituals and sacrifices. Perhaps the priest king wore a gold bracelet on his wrist and golden spirals adorned his cloak or hat glistening in the sun as symbols of solar magic. African Art African rock art is an invaluable heritage that highlights the richness and diversity of the continent's cultures. From South African sand paintings to the enigmatic tassily paintings of North Africa, rock art reflects thousands of years of history. The Sahara contains some of the oldest specimens dating back to the end of the last ice age about 12,000 years ago. Images of antelopes, giraffes, and other animals indicate the rich fauna of that time. Mysterious symbols and figures that combine the characteristics of animals and humans continue to intrigue scientists. In Central Africa, in the zone of distribution of the pygmies, geometric rock art predominates, testifying to the ancient culture of these people. In Eastern Africa, in Tanzania, rock art consists of animals and humans is reminiscent of sand traditions but has its own unique features. To the south, across the Zambezi River, is the island of the sand, where art dates back to the most ancient times. Sand rock art, reflecting the spiritual journeys and rituals of shamans, is among the most exquisite and symbolically rich examples of world art. This heritage needs to be protected and preserved for future generations to continue to inspire and teach about humanity's past. Pyramids of Giza 
The greatness of ancient Egyptian civilization is most clearly demonstrated in the pyramids of Giza, standing on the Giza Plateau as eternal guardians of time. Built over four and a half thousand years ago, these monumental structures remain one of mankind's most significant achievements, demonstrating not only architectural mastery, but also the ancient Egyptians' advanced knowledge of mathematics, astronomy, and engineering. In 2013, archaeologists discovered papyrus fragments that shed light on the mechanisms by which, limestone by which limestone blocks were transported. These documents, written by the chief of the pyramid's builders, Merer, recount the complex logistical operation of transporting the stones from the Turek quarries to the Giza Plateau. The use of waterways and specially designed canals demonstrates a high level of engineering and planning. The Pyramid of Cheops, also known as the Great Pyramid, is striking in its astronomical accuracy. The orientation of the pyramid almost perfectly coincides with the four cardinal directions, which indicates the deep knowledge of the ancient Egyptians in the field of astronomy. This achievement required not only accurate astronomical observations, but also the development of mathematical and geometric calculation methods. One of the most fascinating mysteries of ancient Egypt is the mystery of the disappearance of the pyramid's shine. The pyramids of Giza were originally lined with sparkling white limestone, which reflected sunlight, making them visible for tens of kilometers around. This brilliant appearance not only emphasized the greatness and power of the pharaohs, but also symbolized their divine origin. Over time, most of the casing stones were looted and destroyed, which led to the loss of the original appearance of the pyramids. For nearly four millennia, the Great Pyramid remained the tallest man-made structure on Earth until it was surpassed by Lincoln Cathedral in England in the 14th century. This fact emphasizes the exceptional achievements of ancient Egyptian civilization in the field of architecture and construction. The construction of the pyramids involved the use of millions of stone blocks, each of which weighed from 2.5 to 50. Tons. The ancient Egyptians developed and used sophisticated techniques and tools to quarry these blocks, process them, and place them precisely. Nubia, located south of Egypt, played a significant role in the history and culture of ancient Egyptian civilization. This region, rich in gold and other valuable resources, influenced the development of Egyptian art, architecture, and religion. The Nubian pyramids, although smaller in size compared to their Egyptian counterparts, demonstrate unique architectural skill and evidence the close cultural ties between the two regions. It is important to know that over 200 pyramids were built in Nubia, making the region one of the largest concentrations of pyramids in the world. The Mystery of Japanese Figurines Mysticism reigns around the ancient art of Japan, especially among Western scholars. What is the meaning of the small, alien-like, adorable clay figurines called dogu, found within the prehistoric German period? Why do dogu have such similar traits despite the diversity of masters and regions? And how can we give meaning to works created by people with whom we have no opportunity to communicate? They have been discovered mainly in Western Japan since the 17th century and have a unique appearance. To modern humans, they may appear alien-like due to their bulging eyes and exaggerated proportions, but they are assumed to depict humanoid, likely female figures, with wide hips and feminine breasts. Archaeologists and cultural scientists are still not sure of the exact purpose of dogu in ancient society. There is an assumption that the figurine served as an assistant during childbirth or a symbol of fertility. These similarities between dogu and fertility figurines from other cultures suggest that they probably symbolize the pregnant female body. The German period spans a vast period of time and includes various stages from early to late, each characterized by its own unique features in the making of pottery and the use of dogu for shamanistic or ritual purposes. In modern Japan, dogu have taken on new life, becoming icons in video games and pop culture, demonstrating their influence far beyond the historical German period and expanding their presence into the modern world, where they are embodied in various artistic and cultural forms. Children's Cemetery on the island of Boscata, located in the northern Aegean Sea, archaeologists have uncovered the secrets of the ancient past by discovering burial sites that are hundreds of years old. This island, also known as Tenedo, is associated with the myth of Tennis, a ruler during the Trojan War and served as a strategic point for military campaigns and antiquity. Under the leadership of Professor Turan Takalu from Kanakali University, new finds were discovered in 2023 in the area of the ancient necropolis, where they found numerous 
children's barrels with ritual objects placed in pitoi and amphorae. Particular attention was drawn to the pitous grave of the 6th century BC, to which another burial was added later in the 4th century BC. In this grave, figurines of goddesses in the bronze pin were discovered, which allowed scientists to delve deeper into the study of the beliefs and cultural traditions of that time. Figurines reflect in Phrygian culture speak of the worship of Cybele and Dionysus, which is characteristic of the dominant beliefs of the 4th century BC in Tenedo. Giant from the USA at the end of the 19th century, deep in the dense forests of North America, near a small settlement that is today known as the Black Hills, South Dakota, a discovery occurred that shocked the scientific world of the time. A local forester, walking along his usual routes, came across an unusually large stone protruding from the ground. He was surprised by its size and unusual shape and decided to invite a group of archaeologists from a nearby university. When archaeologists began excavating, they discovered that the stone was actually part of a giant stone sarcophagus. Inside, they found the well-preserved remains of a man whose height exceeded 3 meters. This discovery caused much controversy among scientists of the time, some of whom argued that the find could shed light on the existence of ancient giants mentioned in the legends and myth of many cultures around the world. Despite significant interest from the scientific community, much of the information about the find and the object itself have been lost over time. Only a couple of photographs taken during the excavations and a few entries in the personal diaries of the expedition members have remained to this day. These photographs, although not very clear due to the limitations of technology at the time, show the enormous size of the skeleton compared to the people who excavated it. Rich in history and mystery, the Black Hills continued to attract explorers and adventurers eager to uncover the secrets of ancient civilizations and perhaps find lost archaeological treasures. Thus, the story of the archaeological discovery of an ancient giant man remains one of the most mysterious and unsolved pages in the history of archaeology. Medieval Ring the legendary Sherwood Forest, famous for Robin Hood, the robber who took from the rich for the benefit of the poor, has given treasure to the modern treasure hunter, a medieval ring found in the ground and believed to date from the 14th century. Mark Thompson, who paints forklifts for a living, discovered the artifact in the famous Nottinghamshire Forest just 20 minutes after he began searching with a metal detector. 34-year-old Thompson, who took up the hobby just 18 months ago, was expecting to find something minor but discovered a gold ring ring with a precious sapphire. The find is being evaluated for treasure and Thompson is hoping for a big win. Valuers estimate the ring could be worth between 20,000 and 70,000 pounds. The guy is eagerly awaiting for outcome of the trial to confirm the ring's status as treasure. If it is recognized as such, it will be assessed by experts and offered for purchase to museums and Thompson will receive a reward. The ring decorated with the image of the infant Christ on one side and the female saint on the other came to us from the 14th century. The oldest dinosaur in Africa a small dinosaur with a long neck found by a team of paleontologists led by specialists from the Virginia Institute of Technology, USA, became the key to new discoveries about the migration of ancient reptiles. Named Emberisaurus rathi, this sauropodomorph is the oldest dinosaur fossil found in Africa, living about 230 million years ago. It measured approximately 180 centimeters in length and weighed between 9 and 30 kilograms. The discovery was made in Zimbabwe and made in important contribution to understanding the geographical distribution of ancient dinosaurs. It was previously thought that Pangaea's climatic conditions limited animal migration, but the discovery in Zimbabwe suggests otherwise. The study suggests that dinosaurs may have spread further than previously thought, and Berzorus rathi, despite its modest size, plays an important role in the study of the history of ancient reptiles, providing new data on the migratory routes and climatic conditions that contributed to their spread across the globe. Crocodiles in Christian Churches Imagine, you enter a church and there is a crocodile there. Sounds like the start of a joke, right? However, this is a real story because the medieval temples of Europe were actually decorated with stuffed animals of these reptiles. The crocodile settled in the Seville Cathedral back in the 13th century, thanks to King Alfonso X, who received it as a gift from the Egyptian emir. After the reptile died, its skin was stretched over a wooden base and hung from the ceiling of the cathedral. In Italy, 
Italy, in the sanctuary of the Blessed Virgin Mary of Mercy in Curtiton, a crocodile hands reminiscent of the proximity of evil for five centuries. And in the chapel of the Virgin Mary in Maserata, there is another one, according to different versions, brought by the Crusaders, which came to the city itself in 1589. The Church of St. Mary in Ponte Nossa has preserved a crocodile skin since 1594, despite orders to remove it. And 40 kilometers from St. Petersburg, in Oranian Baum, priest Oleg Emelianenko in the Church of St. Sparadin set up a real zoo, where Nile crocodiles live among other animals. Thus, stuffed crocodiles in churches are not a myth, but part of a religious and cultural tradition reflecting historical connections and beliefs of past centuries. Lidenberg Cats between 1962 and 1964, a boy in Lindenburg and Pumalanga, South Africa, discovered strange pieces of pottery washing out of the ravine. These pieces were assembled and recreated into seven hats known as the Lindenburg hats, which are the earliest known examples of Iron Age art south of the equator. The hats, dating back to 580, were used for ceremonial purposes by the ancient inhabitants. Lindenburg hats consist of two large ones and five smaller ones. They have a rough texture and range in color from red to golden orange. All seven hats have holes, indicating possible use in rituals or as part of a costume. Scientists believe that the hats were created by the Bantu, who were engaged in agriculture and metallurgy. Excavations and anthropological studies have refuted suggestions that the hats were made from human skulls, confirming their ceramic origin. The Strange Desires of Dr. Gottfried Nash Sometimes there is only a thin line between the greatness of the mind and the borders of madness. It seems that talent is clearly not enough to bring brilliant ideas to life. It takes something more, like a unique way of thinking. Here's a story to prove it. In 1813, Gottfried Nosch was born in Halberstadt, Germany. He became famous thanks to his unique invention, a special embalming fluid, with which he was able to mummify dozens of bodies, including his own. Having moved from Germany to Venezuela in 1840, Nosh settled in La Guaira, in the north of the country, where soon, where he soon became part of the local community and founded the Hospital of San Juan de Dios. During his years of work from 1854 to 1856, he gained a reputation as a do-gooder, selflessly caring for the poor and fighting cholera that was ravaging the region. Nosh was distinguished by his burning interest not only in life, but also in the aesthetics of death. He was obsessed with the idea of circumventing the inevitable decomposition of bodies after death and began experimenting with unused bodies, a practice that went far beyond the usual medical research of the time. As a result of Nosh's efforts, a liquid formula was developed that allows bodies to be preserved unchanged. Anticipating his own death, Nosh made sure that his assistant Emily Weissman, whom the locals called the Witch of Avila, prepared the liquid for his body. There was a legend that he even asked her to inject the serum into his living body before imprisoning himself in the mausoleum forever. Over time, the Nosh mausoleum and his Buena Vista estate turn into ruins, but they still keep the secrets of their mummified inhabitants, including famous personalities of Venezuela. This place attracts both medical students and adventurers, although the very composition of Nosh's embalming fluid remains unknown. This story reminds us how a great mind can lead to unusual, sometimes frightening discoveries. Where do you think the line between genius and madness lies? Share your thoughts in the comments. Aluminum Wedge the Ayuda Aluminum Wedge, also known as the Ayuda Object, is one of the most mysterious and controversial finds of our time. According to various sources, it was discovered in 1973 in Romania on the banks of the Mures River, under a layer of sand about 10 meters deep, next to the bones of a mastodon. The main reason for the conspiracy theories surrounding the Ayuda Aluminum Wedge is that it is made from aluminum, a material unknown to mankind before the 1800s, while the wedge is believed to be around 10. 10,000 years old. The composition of the wedge includes 89% aluminum, 6.2% copper, 1.8% zinc and other elements. Aluminum production requires temperatures of 1000 degrees and mass production began only in 1885. The wedge is covered with a thick layer of oxide, the age of which is estimated at 3-400 years. After the discovery, the object was transferred to the Archaeological Institute of cluj napoca for research, but the dating method was not specified. The basis for the theory of the 
extraterrestrial origin of the wedge is its aluminum composition. Romanian ufologist Florian Georgetta and other researchers consider the wedge to be evidence of extraterrestrial activity in the past. However, there are also scientists who consider the find to be a fake, the purpose of creation and origin of which remain unclear. Since 1995, the Ayuda wedge is no longer on public display and is kept in an undisclosed location, although there are photographs confirming its existence. Great African Sea Forest The Great African Sea Forest is one of a kind forest of a giant bamboo kelp stretching more than 1,000 kilometers from the coast of Cape Town north to the coast of Namibia. This underwater wonder became widely known after the release of the film My Octopus Teacher, which showed the richness and diversity of its inhabitants. Despite its appearance, kelp is not a plant but a type of algae. The African Sea Forest is dominated by two species of kelp. Sea bamboo, Eclonia maxima, and split kelp, Laminaria pallida, forming underwater canopus. Warming oceans and forcing marine life to adapt, and kelp forests are changing. The Great African Sea Forest, expanding to the east, is home to a huge community of wildlife, including striped sharks, brittle stars, jellyfish, and many unique fish species. South Africa is also famous for its nudibranchia, tiny but colorful sea slugs that add color to the underwater world. Kelp is increasingly being used commercially, including in cosmetics and feed for fish and shellfish farms. Stone Forest of Madagascar Chini de Bemaraha is a unique nature reserve located 70 kilometers from the western coast of Madagascar, representing a majestic landscape of limestone cathedrals, towers, and canyons. This place, ideal for walking, takes its name from the local word chengi, meaning to walk on tiptoe, reflecting the sensation experienced when crossing this uneven terrain. The Chini de Bemaraha Nature Reserve is a UNESCO World Heritage Site due to its unique geological formations and diversity of endemic plants and animal species. The Manambula River flowing through it is a source of life for wildlife. The reserve also contains pristine lakes and mangrove swamps that are home to native lemurs and birds, many of which are endangered. This reserve offers a variety of hiking trails, allowing visitors to explore its spectacular topography and immerse themselves in the untouched beauty of Madagascar's wilderness. Walking through the reserve reveals stunning views, hidden caves, and encounters amazing fauna, making visiting this place an unforgettable experience for adventurers and nature lovers. Chini de Bamaraha is sometimes called the stone forest did its unusual landscape, reminiscent of a forest of stone towers, canyons, and cracks. These unique formations were created by millions of years of erosion and weathering, creating a surreal and alien atmosphere. Ancient Roman Giant in an area near Rome, archaeologists have discovered a unique ancient human skeleton with gigantism. With a height of 202 centimeters, the man stood out among his 3rd century contemporaries, where the average height was about 167 centimeters. Gigantism is an extremely rare phenomenon, affecting approximately three people in a million, and is associated with dysfunction of the pituitary gland in childhood. Previously, partial skeletons had been found in Poland and Egypt, presumably indicating gigantism, but the Roman find was the first confirmed case from antiquity. The skeleton was found in 1991 during excavations of the necropolis in Fidena under the administration of Rome. The archaeological team immediately noted the unusual length of the tomb, and later research confirmed the features of the bones. The researchers found skull lesions consistent with the pituitary tumor, as well as disproportionately long limbs and evidence of bone growth in early adulthood. The early death of a man, presumably between 16 and 20 years of age, may indicate problems associated with gigantism. The skeleton was found without funeral items, and its burial did not differ from the traditions of that time. Which which indicates its acceptance by society. The symbolism of this find underscores the interest of Roman high society in people with physical abnormalities. Tomb filled with gold in Panama, archaeologists discovered a 1,300-year-old tomb that was filled with gold items and unique artifacts. The peculiarity of the burial is that its occupant was buried facing the ground. This unique find was made in the El Caño Archaeological Park in the Nata region, known for its ancient tombs and monuments dating back to 700-1000 AD. 
The find provides new information about the Kogel culture, which flourished in the area before the arrival of the Spaniards. Artifacts include an abundance of gold jewelry, including pectorals, gold belts and bracelets, earrings depicting human figures and two-headed crocodiles, as well as belts, dog-toothed jewelry, sets of bone flutes and much more. Numerous artifacts richly decorated with gold emphasize the high social status of the deceased, presumably one of the leaders of the local community. Of interest is the practice of burying servants together with their master, which indicates sacrifices and confirms the status of the buried. Clerkstorp Walls The Clerkstorp Walls, discovered in South Africa, are striking in their appearance, resembling cricket balls with lines along the equator. Their discovery in pyrophyllite deposits gave rise to theories about the intervention of aliens in ancient civilizations. In the 1980s, it was suggested that the bolts were created by a higher civilization. They became the object of study not only by scientists, but also by pseudoscientific theories, some of which attributed them to extraterrestrial origin. Geologist Bruce Kieran Cross in 2006 proposed a scientific explanation for the origin of the bolts, located in a geological layer known as the Dominion Group. Clerkstorp bowls are nodules formed from minerals that are different from the surrounding rock. Their spherical shape and lines are caused by natural sedimentation processes and the layering of the rock. The curator of the Clerkstorp Museum explained the spontaneous rotation of the ball as a natural physical effect caused by the heterogeneity of the surface and vibrations of the earth associated with gold mining. The Clerkstorp bowls have thus become a subject of both scientific and cultural interests, demonstrating the difficulty of interpreting in archaeological finds. Mermaid from India Not many people have heard of the archaeological site of Chandrakataga in India, which is located about 35 kilometers from Kolkata. Chandrakataka was a prosperous port city involved in international trade where people lived since 400 BC before 1250 AD. Today, only the ruins of a brick Buddhist temple from the 10th century remain on this site. Interests in Chandrakataka arose due to the many terracotta artifacts dating back to the Shunga period, i.e. 200-100 BC. Most of them were stolen and taken abroad, and only a few fragments survived in Indian museums. Although the complex was discovered in 1906, the Archaeological Survey of India under British control did not carry out excavations here. Many of the stolen items are now in museums around the world, such as the Metropolitan. Two terracotta plates depict a mermaid, a rather rare image in Indian culture. In one, a mermaid swims by a lake, holding something that looks like a mirror or a flower. People on the shore look at her as if she was a miracle. The great chief arrived in a chariot to see this creature. On another, a mermaid was caught in a net by fishermen. People wave at her and she answers them without showing any fear. Looking at these reliefs, I wondered, are they not a reflection of ancient legends or real events that took place in Chandra Kutra 2200 years ago? Perhaps mermaids were not a figment of the imagination, but real sea creatures in ancient times. Write in the comments under the video, do you believe in the existence of of mermaids or something similar? It's no wonder that the depths of the seas and oceans have not yet been explored. Excellently preserved fresco Archaeologists have made a surprising discovery in Pompeii, discovering an ancient fresco that had been hidden under a layer of volcanic ash for two millennia. This work of art was found in the famous House of Fleta, decorated with exquisite paintings which is an important historical object. It depicts a, myth a mythological scene with Phrixus and Hell, brother and sister, who escaped from their evil stepmother on a magic ram. This legend tells how Aino, an evil stepmother, seeks to get rid of his stepchildren. In the scene depicted, Hell falls from the ram and, according to myth, drowns in the streets separating Europe and Asia. Archaeologists call this discovery truly magical. The city of Pompeii was buried under a thick layer of ash after the eruption of Vesuvius in 79 AD, and excavations are still ongoing, from time to time presenting scientists with unexpected artifacts. It is expected that this unique artifact will soon be presented to the public. Great Zimbabwe Great Zimbabwe is a medieval city that was the center of a wealthy trading empire in Africa, with connections to the Middle and Far East. It served as a trade and industrial hub for the East African coast from the 11th to the 15th century AD. At its height, it was home to about 18,000 people, but only 200-300 of the elite actually lived in its large-scale stone structures. 
Great Zimbabwe's legacy has long been distorted by colonialists who believe the city was too developed to have been created by Africans. Significant looting by Europeans in the 20th century has also made it difficult to understand its true roots. The word Zimbabwe means stone houses in the Shona language. Great Zimbabwe is the largest of these places. The city was part of a large trading network where archaeologists have discovered pottery from China and Persia as well as Arab coins. Today, the ruins are divided into three architectural zones – the hill complex, the great enclosure, and the valley complex. The hill complex was probably a religious center. The great enclosure, with its imposing granite walls, may have served as a royal residence or a symbolic granary. At its peak, Great Zimbabwe employed thousands of goldsmiths and artisans. The city was surrounded by more than 4,000 gold and 500 copper mines, contributing to its wealth and prosperity. Great Zimbabwe became the heart of an extensive trade network, including trade in gold, ivory, copper, and tin. The fall of Great Zimbabwe is most often attributed to a lack of food, pasture, and natural resources, but the exact reason remains unclear. Magic Circles in the Desert for decades, scientists have puzzled over the origins of circular patches of grass in the Namibian desert that appear and disappear seemingly for no reason. Now it seems the mystery has been solved. These so-called magic circles, with a diameter of 2 to 10 meters, form an amazing pattern on the surface of one of the driest places on Earth. For a long time, their origin remained a mystery. There were two main theories. One associated the circles with the activity of termites, the second suggested the self-organization of grass to combat drought. Recently, scientists from the University of Göttingen in Germany proposed a new theory. They believe that the circles can form due to extremely rare and irregular precipitation. This causes the grass to grow at the edges of the circles, leaving the center lifeless, since it is the roots of the grass extending to great depth that allow the plants to survive and thrive in conditions of low water. This discovery not only reveals the mystery of Namibia's magical circles, but it also demonstrates nature's amazing ability to organize itself and adapt to changing environmental conditions. The Most Ancient Religion in Botswana, one of the southern African countries, archaeologists have stumbled upon amazing traces of ancient ritual worship dating back to a period of about 70,000 years ago, which is the earliest evidence of the religious practices of Homo sapiens. This discovery, made by Professor Sheila Colson from the University of Oslo, overturns traditional ideas about the history of religion and culture. In the Kalahari Desert lies Sadilo Hill, a place surrounded by the myth of the Sun People. He was here in a small cave that a huge stone shaped like a python was found. Hundreds of notches imitating snakeskin were found on it. Excavations near the python stone revealed findings that amazed scientists. 13,000 tools were working with stone and stone spearheads brought here from afar, possibly as offerings. These finds indicate complex ritual practices of ancient people. Of particular interest is a small depression behind the stone, where scientists suggest a shaman could be located during rituals creating the illusion illusion that the voice comes directly from the python itself. Only two rock paintings were found in the cave, an elephant and a giraffe, which also has a symbolic meaning associated with local myths. Revered among the Sun people, the python is associated with the origins of humanity and is believed to be the creator of ancient riverbeds that curved in search of water. Thus, archaeologists may have found the very first mentions of religion. Artifacts in the form of a cobra Archaeologists have discovered a 4,000-year-old artifact representing a figurine of a snake that was likely used in ancient rituals. The discovery was made by a team of researchers from the National Chin He University in Taiwan, in a sand dune in the northwest of the island, an area with a rich archaeological past. It is assumed that this figurine, made in the form of a snake, could serve as the handle of a ceramic vessel intended for ritual purposes. Associate professor at the Chin He Institute of Anthropology, Han Lin Chu noted that the figurine resembles a cobra with a raised head and characteristic folds on the neck which makes it a unique evidence of cult practices of antiquity. Snakes, a frequent symbol in the religion and mythology, have been associated with the cycle of life and death, symbolizing creation and transition. Scientists suggest that the snake handle could decorate a sacrificial vessel, actively used in ritual rites by ancient priests. Janus in Gold 
Under the crown of Krakow's Wawel Castle, archaeologists discovered an amazing artifact, a gold ring from the 11th 12th centuries with a two-faced design unique in Polish history. Unlike typical Christian symbols of the era, the decor of the double-faced ring may indicate a connection with Janus, the Roman god of beginnings and transitions who has no analogues in Greek mythology. This rare find demonstrates the high level of craftsmanship of its creators. The ring, which has a thickness of one and a half millimeters and a diameter of 4 millimeters and a circumference of 57 millimeters is distinguished by its intricate decoration. This may get exceptional among other early medieval jewelry found in Poland, which was usually either unadorned or had simply geometric designs. Researcher Jerzy Trebinski emphasizes the uniqueness of the ring, suggesting that it could have been made by local craftsmen and may have belonged to the upper echelon of society during the Piast dynasty. The ring was found in the basement of the Danish tower built by order of Ladislav II Jagiello during the era of reconstruction of the castle. Ancient Tomb Hidden in the shadow of the blue doors of an ancient Min dynasty tomb in China was a mystery for centuries. Having opened the gates, archaeologists encountered an extraordinary, luxurious tomb from 400 years ago. The tomb, found during preparations for the construction of a highway in Shanxi province, is impressive in its preservation and sophistication of execution. Researchers have confirmed that the tomb, dating back to the Ming era, contained nobles. Two luxurious wooden coffins with exquisite patterns and porcelain vessels indicate the high status of the diseased. Epitaphs hint at noble origins and magnificently decorated coffers indicate a connection with the royal court. The finds include furniture, writing instruments, and artistic objects, highlighting the sophisticated lifestyle of the elite of the time. Despite many hypotheses, the exact reason for the opulence and purpose of the tomb remain unknown, adding mystery to the history of the Min Dynasty, a period of flourishing culture, art, and science in China. Where did the ancient Egyptians got come from? Ancient Egypt continues to excite the minds of scientists with its secrets, one of which is the country of Punt. Unlike the mythical Atlantis and Ahati, Punt was a very real place, located somewhere in eastern Africa. The Egyptians sent trading expeditions there, bringing back goods that one could only dream of – precious trees, gold, ivory, and aromatic resins. The first mention of Punt dates back to the 26th century BC, during the time of Pharaoh Cheops. Expeditions continued for centuries bringing untold riches to Egypt. An important step was the construction of a canal connecting the Nile and the Red Sea under Pharaoh Senesred III, which simplified the route to Punt. The exact location of Punt is still a matter of debate among scholars. There is an assumption that it was located in the area of modern Somalia, Djibouti, Eritrea, and Sudan, and could also cover the territory as far as southern Africa. Some researchers believe that Egyptian sailors could even reach the Cape of Good Hope. Legends and myths about Punt have been preserved in Egyptian culture as the homeland of the gods and ancestors of the Egyptians. The last known expedition to Punt was undertaken under Pharaoh Ramses III. After this, travel to the land of wealth ceased and Punt gradually turned into legend. Today, archaeological research in Punt is complicated by the political situation in the region, making it one of the greatest unsolved mysteries of the ancient world. Relations between Egypt and Punt, as far as we know, have always remained peaceful, which is a unique fact in the history of interaction between ancient civilizations. Pan's trace still lives on in the name of the autonomous region of Somalia, Puntland. Lock Coffin Culture an ancient legacy left by a culture that flourished in northwestern Thailand is surprising archaeologists with its unique burial customs. Some 40 burial sites where people found their final rest in tea coffins decorated with intricate designs testify to a highly developed Iron Age culture. Researchers from Germany and Thailand analyzed the DNA of ancient people to uncover connections between different communities. Between 2300 and 1000 BC, a mysterious culture flourished in Mai Han Son province. DNA analysis of 33 ancient people from five coffins found that genetic relatedness played a key role in burial traditions, highlighting the importance of family ties in choosing a burial site. The study was a breakthrough in Southeast Asian archaeology, providing the first analysis of genetic and cultural relationships at the level of ancient communities. Despite the difficulty of preserving DNA in, in tropical climates, scientists have identified two major genetic lineages linked to agriculture, indicating deep connections to the Yangtze and Yellow River valleys in China.
The Sahara wasn't always a desert. About 10,000 years ago, the landscape of the famous Sahara Desert was completely unrecognizable. A new hypothesis suggests that humans could be involved in changing the ecological balance. Today's Sahara, with its endless sands, was green, filled with lakes, rivers, meadows, and even forests. Archaeologist David Wright had suggested that it was humans and their domestic animals that may have triggered this dramatic ecological transformation. The study showed that the appearance of shepherds with animals coincided with changes in vegetation, as if turning everything around into a desert. Wright argues that transhumans may have reduced atmospheric humidity and accelerated the process of aridification, which is not explained solely by changes in the Earth's orbit. These nomads could also use fire to cultivate the land, which only intensified the process of desert formation. Geologist Jessica Tierney points out that the Green Sahara would still turn into a desert even without human intervention, due to changes in the Earth's orbit. At the same time, natural factors and changes in the amount of dust may be responsible for the sudden transition. Research suggests using mathematical models to compare the environmental impacts of nomads and herders. These studies will help to better understand how humans influence the environment today. Scientists are planning to drill into dry lake beds in the Sahara to analyze pollen and sea data and compare them with archaeological data. Thracian Chariot in November 2008, archaeologists discovered a unique bronze chariot dating from the end of the 2nd century AD in an ancient Thracian tomb in southeastern Bulgaria. This richly decorated chariot is one of the few found in Bulgaria and serves as evidence of the ritual practices that accompanied the funerals of prominent figures of the Thracian people who believed in a better life after death. The dead were offered all the items they needed in life, and the higher the status of the deceased, the richer the funeral gifts were. The bronze chariot, covered with wood, is decorated with scenes from Thracian mythology. Images of the god Eris, a leaping panther, and a mythological beast with the body of a panther and the tail of a dolphin. The wheels of the chariot have a diameter of about one and a half meters. The discovery of a four-wheeled chariot, especially one with such large wheel diameters, is extremely rare. At the archaeological site, well-preserved wooden parts of chariots, table ceramics, glassware, wooden and leather objects, probably part of horse harnesses and other gifts were found that were used for the funeral of a wealthy Thracian aristocrat. A couple from the United States with a strange story. In 1875, in downtown Philadelphia, in an old cemetery, workers discovered the mummified bodies of a man and a woman believed to have died in 1792, although this information was later refuted. No records of the Allen Bogan family or other documents confirming their existence have been found. The bodies went through a process of saponification, becoming soap mummies due to the specific burial conditions where the fat was converted into a soap mass slow in decomposition. The man, who was more saponified than the woman, and the woman was vestiges of blonde hair on her head, presumably died at a later date than originally thought, which was confirmed by the discovery of round-headed pins, the technology of which did not emerge until 1824. The the man was likely a manual laborer and had healthy bones but degenerative changes in the cervical spine. Both had preserved internal organs, but the man had poor oral hygiene, resulting in most of his teeth falling out during his lifetime. The woman died at about 30 years old and had health problems including urethral and gallstones and vascular calcification. The soap lady is now on display at the Mütter Museum, and the soap man is in storage at the Smithsonian Natural History Museum, where scientists are studying them to try to uncover the mysteries of their lives and death. Medusa Gorgon in the British town of Nasborough, on the banks of the River Ned, there is a unique cave called Mother Shipton, where objects turn into stone. According to legend, it was here in 1488 that the famous soothsayer Mother Shipton was born, who predicted many events, including the Great Fire of London. Initially, the waterfall in the cave was famous for its healing properties, but over time, local residents discovered that objects that fell under its water turned to stone. This attracted public attention and the cave became Britain's first paid attraction. Among the exhibits in the cave, you can see many fossilized objects, including men's top hats and hats from the 19th century, teapots, teddy bears, and even a bicycle. The secret of this phenomenon lies in the high content of minerals in the cave water, which contribute to the petrification of objects. Thus. Mother Shipton's cave is evidence of an interesting natural phenomena and attracts stories with its history and amazing exhibits, each of which contains part of the magic and mysticism of the past. Sculpture of a Winged Deity 
In northern Iraq, archaeologists made an amazing discovery – a statue of the wind deity Lamassu. Despite the passage of centuries and its majestic size, the sculpture remained almost intact. This 2,700-year-old alabaster monument represents Lamassu, a deity with a human head, the body of a bull or lion, and bird wings, who lost his head. However, it was restored. The head is already on display at the Iraqi Museum in Baghdad. Custom officers seized it from smugglers in the 19th 90s. French archaeologist Pascal Badelin, who led the excavations, noted the importance of this find, comparing its size with monuments in Egypt and Cambodia. The weight of the statue is 18 tons and its dimensions are 3.8 by 3.9 meters. This grand, centuries-old artifact once stood at the entrance to the ancient city of Dar Sharking. It is known that it was ordered to be installed during the reign of King Sargon II in order to protect the capital of Assyria. Interesting fact, the statue was mentioned in documents of the 19th century, but then disappeared from the attention of scientists for many years. Residents of the local village of Korsabad eventually hid the rest of the statue to protect it from destruction. Oldest Bead in America an archaeological team from the University of Wyoming found the oldest known bead in North America at the ancient mammoth site La Prille in Converse County, USA. At this site, there are traces of an ancient hunting camp and the remains of a young Colombian mammoth. The research, published in the journal Scientific Reports, revealed the discovery of a Clovis bead made from the bones of a hare. This object, 7 mm long and 1.5 mm wide, probably served as a decorative ornament for clothing. The bead is polished, has smoothed edges, and is covered with red ochre. There are grooves on the outside of the bead indicating that it was made using stones or teeth. To determine the origin of the bone material, scientists from the University of Washington conducted a mass spectrometric analysis of collagen. Analysis confirmed that the material was either a metapodium or a proximal phalanx of a hair. The discovery provided the first conclusive evidence of the use of hairs during the Clovis era, dating back approximately 12,000 years ago. The Clovis era is noted for the discovery of distinctive stone tools named after the Clovis archaeological site in New Mexico. Tiny Alien just two months after scientists in Peru exposed a hoax claiming two dolls were actually alien buddies, alien stories are resurfacing online. This time, a premature human fetus with an elongated skull found in Colombia is being linked to little green men and ancient races. However, skeptical scientists prove that the skeleton belonged to non-born human fetus. The main reason why many people believe such absurd headlines about aliens is because some of the world's major media outlets publish high hyperdramatic articles present logical fallacies. Adequate scientists and anyone who read an anatomy textbook in school can definitely say that the remains belong to a stillborn human fetus. The so-called alien has an elongated skull which combined with its unusual eyes and ten ribs on each side of the body as opposed to the typical twelve in humans has led to claims of extraterrestrial origin. As it turns out, the reporter who broke the story in the Daily Mail received the first images of the alien anonymously via WhatsApp. That's all the archaeological discoveries. While some speculate about an ancient tiny race of people that coexisted with Aymara people of the Andes hundreds if not thousands of years ago, research by anatomists from the University of Stockholm in Sweden and Stony Brook Medical School in the US suggests that the skeleton belongs to the fetus of a premature human baby. The Oldest Pirate Flag the National Museum of the Navy in Portsmouth displays a unique artifact, the Jolly Roger pirate flag captured off the coast of Africa in 1780. This flag with the red background sent a specific message to merchant ships – surrender or die. There are traces of gunpowder and charred bullet holes on its fabric. Around 1700, such flags began to be actively used by pirates. Initially, red dominated, but over time, pirates experimented with other designs, including black flags. Richard Noyce, the museum's curator, says the image of pirates created by Hollywood is far from reality. In history, they were dangerous threats to trade and not romantic movie heroes. Each pirate ship captain could choose his own design for his flag, but the skull and crossbones motive became the most popular. The name Jolly Roger likely comes from the French phrase Jolie Rouge, which translates to beautiful red, emphasizing the original red color of the flag. Subglacial Lake in Antarctica 
A Chinese expedition is planning a unique study of the subglacial Lake Killen in Antarctica, discovered in 2022 and hidden under 3,600 meters of ice. The lake, covering 370 square kilometers and up to 200 meters deep, may have been cut off from the outside world for 3 million years, making it a potential home for unknown life forms adapted to extreme conditions. Researchers hope that penetrating its depth will reveal the secrets of the ecosystem and provide new data about the Earth's climatic past. However, the challenge requires the development of advanced technologies for clean drilling and sample collection to avoid contamination of the unique environment. There is no start date for the expedition as scientists ramp up technological preparations for this ambitious project, which aims to explore never-before-seen corners of our planet and understand how life can survive in the harshest environments. There are only two of these in the world. In eastern Hungary, near Debrecen, archaeologists have discovered a rare burial from the 7th century, an avar warrior completely dressed in plate armor. The discovery was one of only two such finds in the world, demonstrating the luxury and power of military equipment of the avars who migrated to the Pannonian plain from the Asian steppes in the 6th century. The armor, consisting of hundreds of interconnected metal plates, stands out for its excellent preservation and is a key element of the burial kit. The find represents a valuable source of data on the military traditions and burial customs of the Avars, who dominated the region for more than 250 years. Also notable is the method of extracting the burial sets in one block, which is rare for archaeological excavations. This unique find opens up new horizons for understanding the culture and military art of the Avar people. Grissorf Men on July 10, 1834, William Bastwick discovered an ancient burial mound on his property in Gristorp, North Yorkshire, England. In it was found an unusually shaped oak coffin containing the remains of a Bronze Age man known today as the Man of Gristorp. New discoveries about Gristorp man have revealed that he stood around 1.8 meters tall, which was tall for the Bronze Age. This indicated a high social position, perhaps he was a tribal leader. Additional evidence of this status can be found in funerary objects. Before being placed in an oak coffin, the body of the man of Gristorp was wrapped in a leather cloak. The grave goods included a dagger, flint tools, a basket containing food remains, and a bark vessel that, according to modern research, contained milk. Modern science has also revealed that Gristorp man was likely a war warrior due to the presence of numerous healed fractures. Isotopic analysis of his tooth indicates a consistent rich meat diet throughout his life. Radiocarbon dating of dental dentine and femur carried out at the University of Bradford showed his death to be approximately 4,000 years ago. A letter to a loved one written 440 years ago. While renovating an ancient cemetery in Andon, South Korea, in 1999, archaeologists discovered the 16th-century coffin of Yunte of the Gosen Yi clan, where they found the mummified remains of a 30-year-old aristocrat. Inside the coffin was a leather bag with documents, including a touching letter from the deceased's pregnant wife. She addressed her deceased husband and the father of their unborn child. Next to the man's head lay sandals woven from hemp and his wife's hair, which was a symbol of love and hope for healing. The sandals were accompanied by a note from his wife saying that she had woven them from her hair before he would wear them. The find was the first archaeological confirmation of the Korean tradition of making shoes from human hair, mentioned in literature as an expression of deep affection. Coin with a rare image Minted over 2,000 years ago, the silver denarius is hardly the most attractive Roman coin. However, it is key evidence of the early phase of the political struggle that ended with the assassination of Caesar and the fall of the Roman Empire. I was intrigued by its unusual design, which depicted people crossing a bridge and throwing something into a box. It turned out to be a vote. This highlights that efforts to regulate voting access began long before our time. Voting was a key aspect of the Roman Empire, where only man could vote. In 139 BC, Roman politician Aulus Gabinus introduced a law requiring written ballots for elections, making it more difficult for elites to influence voting. The Nerva coin, minted approximately 6-7 years after the introduction of Gaius Marius' law, which limited the influence of the elites, almost certainly refers to this event. The absence of any other figures on the coin other than the poll worker is key to understanding its message. As we can see, the call for voters to come 
to the polls and cast their vote for the best candidate was very important even 2000 years ago, and this important event for any state was even minted on coins. The Sphinx was not built by people. A recent discovery by a team of scientists from New York University radically changes our perception of the history of the Great Sphinx of Giza. Contrary to the generally accepted belief that the monument was carved by the ancient Egyptians, a new theory argues that the Sphinx is the result of natural forces. Researchers paid attention to yardings, natural sculptures formed by erosion in desert conditions reminiscent of animals or people in their contours. Such formations are typical for archaeological zones with a similar climate including the territory of Egypt. In experiments simulating erosion in the laboratory, scientists have proven that when exposed to wind and water, soft rock can form figures remarkably reminiscent of a sphinx. So perhaps the ancient Egyptians just polished and complemented the already existing natural form, giving it clearer features. This study opens a new page in understanding the processes of formation of archaeological sites and the role of nature in the art of antiquity. The oldest bread in the world. During excavations two years ago in the famous ancient Anatolian city of Katalhoyuk, archaeologists discovered a large structure that was used as a public oven. Traces of plant and food remains were also found, including unusual porous sediment with an interesting texture. Research has shown that this strange substance is actually the remains of fermented bread, which, according to radiocarbon dating, was made around 6600 BC. It is safe to say that this find in Katalhoyuk is the oldest bread in the world. Researchers were able to determine that it was ordinary bread, small in size, and probably regularly consumed by a significant portion of the 7 10,000 inhabitants of Chattel in 6600 BC. Interestingly, the bread was not actually cooked in the large oven in which it was found. Technically speaking, the claim that the discovered bread is the oldest in the world is incorrect. Several years ago, archaeologists discovered remains identified as a flatbread at a 14,000-year-old hunter-gatherer site in Jordan known as Shubaika and recently there was a report of 34,000-year-old bread in Australia. But the new discovery is the oldest form of fermented bread ever found, which gives the Chattel Huyuk artifact a certain distinction. Falcon Temple with a Mysterious Message in Berenice, Egypt's ancient port city, archaeologists have discovered an ancient falcon temple that has them baffled by headless birds, unknown deities, and a mysterious inscription, heads are not to be boiled here. The excavations, which are more than 1,700 years old, revealed 15 headless falcons on a pedestal and a stone monument depicting two unknown gods. An iron harpoon, 34 centimeters long, was found next to the pedestal. In another part of the temple, a stele was discovered with a Greek inscription that reads, Hats cannot be boiled here. It is not clear why the falcons were beheaded, why a stele with such an inscription was in the temple, and why the harpoon was placed near the falcons. A stele depicts three deities, Harpocrates of Coptus, the child deity, and two mysterious gods whose names are unknown. One with the head of falcon, the other a goddess wearing a crown with cow horns and a solar disk. It is likely that the headless falcons were sacrifices to these gods, in particular to the falcon-headed god. Remains of fish, mammals, and eggshells were also found in the temple. The temple shows that ancient religious practices continued even after the advent of Christianity. At that time, Christianity was the state religion of the Roman Empire. The beheaded falcons and the ban on boiling heads raised many questions about cults and beliefs in Berenice. Bata's Mysterious Fear the origins of the bat sphere, a steel ball found by a Florida family in 1974, continue to be surrounded by conspiracy theories. Some suggest the alien origin of this find, but both military and ufologists came to the conclusion that the object was created by men. Nevertheless, the mysticism around the sphere continues to live on. The bats family found the sphere after the fire, believing it to be from Spanish colonial times. However, the ball turned out to be completely clean and shiny, not like the weapons of that time. In the house, the sphere began to exhibit mysterious behavior, moving on its own and making sounds. Interest in the sphere increased after a series of studies by experts who were unable to fully reveal its secret. However, scientists are inclined to believe that the ball is of terrestrial origin, citing its steel composition. The bat sphere continues to excite minds, become the subject of speculation and conspiracy theories. Some suggest its connection with alien civilizations, while others see it only as a lost human artifact.
medieval female giant. In the Middle Ages, on the island of Ostrov Lednitsky in Poland, there lived a woman of extraordinary height, who probably suffered from mental disorders. This is the only known giantess from Poland at that time, as confirmed by Dr. Magdalena Matzik. Her height was about 215 centimeters, while ordinary women were around 1.5 meters tall. The woman passed away at the age of 25-30. Her skeleton was found by researchers in the Latinitsi area. According to assumptions, the presence of such a disease could be accompanied by mental problems. Interestingly, despite her height, the life of a giantess in medieval Poland could have been quite comfortable, since she was well known in her community. But her burial was unusual. Contrary to accepted traditions, her face was directly Directed to the West, and she didn't have funerary objects. How thick is the layer of sand in the desert? When you hear the word desert, you imagine huge sand dunes stretching beyond the horizon. But the desert is not only sand under the hot sun. This is a world full of mysteries and unexplored corners open to exploration. Exploring deserts is not an easy task due to the extreme climate and sometimes difficult political situation. But there is much more to the desert than meets the eye. In addition to sand, there are rocky, pebble, mixed and saline deserts, as well as arctic deserts covered with ice and snow. All of them together occupy about 20% of the surface of our planet. Of particular interest is the depth of sand in deserts and what is hidden under this golden sea. Under the sand layer, there is always a stone foundation. Sand depth varies depending on location and various external factors, making measurements a challenging task. Sand dunes can move at speeds of up to 10 meters per year, making these seas of sand even more difficult to study. In the Sahara, the average sand depth reaches 150 meters. And in the Namib Desert, some dunes rise to 400 meters. It's not just rocks that hide beneath the desert sands. The Sahara, for example, contains reserves of oil, gas, and even fresh water, access to which is granted only to the most intrepid explorers. Scientists have mapped underground water located at a depth of about 75 meters, which represents a real treasure in the desert drought conditions. Eye of the Sahara and the Lost City of Atlantis the Eye of the Sahara, also known as the Rishad Structure, is an impressive geological formation in the Sahara Desert in Mauritania. This is a giant circular structure with a diameter of about 50 kilometers, clearly visible from space, which is how it got its name. It is assumed that the Eye of the Sahara was formed as a result of natural processes, in particular the uplift of the Earth's crust and subsequent erosion. Some researchers have considered it as the possible location of the legendary lost city of Atlantis, described by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. According to Plato, Atlantis was an island nation located beyond the Pillars of Hercules, the modern strait of Gibraltar, which had a highly developed civilization and suddenly disappeared as a result of a catastrophic flood around 9600 BC. Over time, the idea of Atlantis has fueled the many generations of explorers, writers, and enthusiasts. Some theories claim that the Eye of the Sahara fits the description of Atlantis due to its circular shape and the presence of fringe structures that that could correspond to Plato's descriptions of the concentric canals and islands of Atlantis. However, scientific evidence indicates that the Rishad structure was formed by natural geological processes and not by human activity or disaster. Despite the lack of direct evidence of the existence of Atlantis, the mystery of this mythical city continues to excite the minds of scientists and lovers of mysticism. The Eye of the Sahara, despite its natural environment, remains one of the most mysterious and visually unique places on Earth, attracting the attention of researchers and tourists from all over the world. Another fantastic and mysterious territory in Africa is ancient Egypt. I talked about it in more detail in my previous video. Be sure to check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Thank you for watching until the end. See you in the next video on the channel.